Oh, hi, I'm Rayford. Thank you for joining me for some more Paragon. You know, today I want to talk about a class of hero that I feel is maybe a little bit underrepresented here in Paragon. I'm talking about the push-up bra, the team composition, the a foundation upon which the rest of the team stands, like a house, a building, maybe an archway or something, uh, like Atlas holding the world upon his shoulders. I am talking about the support class, a class that, well, I mean, they're, they're there to support you. That's kind of like it's in the, what they do. It's like sort of in their classification, I guess. Uh, some people are junglers, then you got carries, you got casters, and you got supports. And uh, yeah, I don't feel like you ever really see enough uh, enough good supports in Paragon. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, like playing one can be super rewarding. Having one on your team that's good is <laughs> almost a blessing, really. So without further ado, I'm going to cover a, a humble young lady, a hero that uh, many of you have seen, many of you know. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that bright shining star in your lives, Decker. Mm, just look at her. She's just so wonderful. I've actually got a, a custom skin on her right now, but yeah, she's a support class hero and uh, just an absolute blast to play. She fits my playstyle a whole lot, mainly because she is focused around CC. Uh, she can't really provide buffs to her uh, to her allies, but she is the CC queen. And we'll go ahead and dive into her abilities here in a minute, but I want to go ahead and cover her skins first. So. Here is her default skin. You know, she's got some of that uh, almost like aqua kind of coloring, a little bit of gray. You know, it's, it's I feel like it's nice. It's kind of you know mellow. It's it's a pleasing eye palette color combination. I don't know. I'm just throwing words out there. Uh, moving on, we have the Challenger Decker. So she trades out some of the blue and the gray for purple and black. I feel like that's actually a really cool com color combination. It's like almost just like. Raw, I'm Decker. Raw, what's up? I don't know why her voice would change tone, but it just did. <laughs> Moving on, we have Master Decker. Per usual, we have flames here. We got flames there. We got flames there and everywhere. So yeah, we got flames on the back. So everything's better with flames, right? Then we have the Arctic Frost Decker. This is the one I've got. If you notice her little face paint, change it or like it glows and it fades out. Whom. And she's also got uh, these like these kicks that uh, are just all shiny and everything, go up with like lace-up boots and whatnot, all the way up the leg. It's so neat. And then finally, we've got Energized Decker. She looks like she's drawing, you know, just <laughs> with like the glowy like circuits. Beep, boop, pop, must protect user. Beep, pop, boop, beep, boop. Beep. But that's enough of her skins, really, because that's all of her skins. Moving on to her abilities. Her really main damage, source of damage is her energy orb. It's a ranged basic attack that deals basic damage. Her right click is more or less her only real dedicated escape. It's the rocket boots. It's a directional leap that launches Decker high into the air. You can use this to like jump up ledges from uh, the jungle into center lane. You can also use this to out juke up enemies that are chasing after you. Basically, if it's a ledge you can jump off of, you can rocket boot back up to it. It's it's so rad, <laughs> especially to like juke somebody out that. Uh, you know, it's chasing after you. Mm, so satisfying. Then she has her Q, which is Stasis Bomb. It's a bouncing bomb that deals ability damage and stuns in an area for 0.7 seconds. The bomb deals reduced damage to any enemy minions it passes through. So one thing to note is this doesn't just affect one hero. If two enemy heroes are close enough, it will stun both of them. Now, I've actually got a clip uh, to showcase in which, you know, in which I stun two enemies like twice. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so much fun. Uh, and again, it bounces. Plus, you can get some range on it. You kind of lob that to lob it, you know? Kobe. Next up, we have her slow bubble. It's an AoE bubble that applies a max movement speed slow to enemies and deals ability damage once it pops. You can actually cast this and re-trigger it early to cause the bubble to pop early, but it deals less damage. This is great for slowing down enemy minions that are kind of pushing forward or slowing down an enemy hero that's trying to escape um, or maybe chase after you, you know? You can use this however you want. Who am I to tell you how to use it? And then finally, her ultimate, Containment Fence. It's a circular energy fence that lasts for three seconds. It blocks enemy projectiles, but not friendly ones. Enemy heroes who touch the walls get knocked to the center of the area, and reactivating it early will cancel the effect. So, a thing to note is if you cast this and uh, an enemy hero, hero is not inside of it, they're like they're outside, even if they touch the outside, it sucks them in. So it's like, 
It's like a vacuum. And then they're like, well, now I can't go anywhere. And you can set, I would say uh, a shooting gallery, arena, coliseum thing. This combo is great with pretty much any hero that has an AOE ult. Uh, if you set this up for like an Aurora or a Gideon or a Howie, then you will wreck all of the faces. Even like a guy that's like passing by, he's like, doop, 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 I'm going to storm, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, no, we're gonna wreck your face too. Get over here, sir. Step into the fence, be wrecked. It's wonderful. But moving on, let's go ahead and take a look at the deck that I've got to build for, for Decker. So this is my Decker on deck build. Uh, it gives you a, quite a bit of survivability and also utility with the whole team. Um, I, I freaking love this build, honestly. To start off the game, you've got three options. You can either go with the Health Potion, Mana Potion, and either Scout's Ward or Shepherd's Vial. And the Shepherd's Vial is there to give you mana regen, but also to heal nearby allies. So it gives you mana, gives them health. They like it. You like it. I mean, the enemy team doesn't really like it because you get mana and they get health, but you know, whatever. Sucks to be them. Or you can pick up the Circlet of Health. Uh, for your carry. I'm going to assume you're paired with the carry if, uh, if you're going to safe lane with Decker, which is where she, she works best. She works best with the carry. Um, Circle of Health helps any teammate that's nearby by giving them health regen. It's just active all the time. You can really use this to help uh, help keep them topped off. It's fantastic. Or you can pick up the Lord's Ward. Um, just because wards are fantastic. Who doesn't love a ward? Generally, I like to try and work out, you know, with my carry prior to like picking a card, what I should pick up, see what they want. Uh, in the clip, I picked up my health potion, my mana potion, and my shepherd's vial, because uh, my carry actually got a ward, so that's awesome. Then uh, I picked up my circlet of health, slotted with two manas and a basic mana. The circlet of mana is there kind of early game. I generally try and discard this, but it's slotted with uh, a divine health and two lesser healths. The only reason for that is because I would go like two healths, but I only have one handy, and I didn't want to craft another one because reasons. Um, so it's entirely up to you. From there, I generally pick up one of these uh, one of these armor cards, either the Tune Barrier if the enemy team is very focused on ability damage, or the Tempered Plate if they're very basic damage focused. Uh, both of them are, fo or are slotted with some kind of additional armor, or two additional armor cards, and a health. So, um, then I grab the Pendulum of Lords for additional mana and health and some mana regen. And it's, you know, you get more mana regen when it's fully upgraded. At this point, I discard my either my health potion or one of my mana potions and grab this Overflowing Gifts. This is an active card that grants health regeneration to yourself and nearby allies, and it's got a cooldown. So this is basically a health potion that heals you and everybody around you. And you don't have to go back to uh, to the base in order to resupply this. So this is absolutely fantastic. Plus, it's got a little bit of natural mana regeneration, and I've thrown on two uh, two point mana regens for you. After that, I usually grab the Honor of the Pure. This provides a barrier to you and nearby teammates, and you can actually use this to sort of I would say negate damage from an enemy ult or like any kind of burst. Um, if you got like a Countess that uh, is blinking to you or somebody near you and is about to ult them, you can actually pop this and hopefully, if not completely negate, then at least, you know, uh, taper down how much damage they're going to do to your ally. So, fantastic little card there. After that, I grab the Chronomancer disc. Uh, cooldown reduction is not something you see very often in Paragon, and Decker's abilities have kind of long cooldowns, so getting them back 10% faster is going to be just crucial for you. It's got a couple of chronos in there for mana regen and a basic spark for more mana regen. As you can see, this is this also like helps to keep you up with your mana, so you can keep using those abilities more often. After that, I grab my purity sensor. This just cleanses any uh, any debuffs from yourself and nearby allies. So I don't have anything slotted into it. That's an expensive card by itself. So at the end of the day, I generally have the overflowing gifts, the honor of the pure, the Lord's Ward, the purity sensor. The Chronomancer disc and uh, one of the, either the Temper Plate or the Tune Barrier, um, or you can in instead keep the Circlet of Health to uh, to grant additional healing for your allies. So, a, a link to this build on Agora.gg will be in the description box down below for those that want to go ahead and try it out. But without further ado, gameplay. 
So to begin with Decker, I like to just try and weaken minions for my carry, help them farm just more quickly, more efficiently. Uh, I also know that Countess is a ranged, or not a ranged, she's a, a melee hero, so I try and keep her out of range so that she can't get any CXP from uh, from minions. So my job is really just trying to poke her, uh, weaken these minions for my carry, let him do his thing, get his farm on, you know, just try and feed him as much as I can and, uh, and keep that Countess at bay and try and weaken her a little bit. See that I uh, just take pot shots at her occasionally, try and kind of scare her off, get her out of here. Right, so now at this point, I'm actually coming from left lane, and uh, I see that mid lane has got some stuff going on, my my uh, twin blast is in trouble, so I'm going to go ahead and use my jump boost, my rocket boots, to uh, jump up here, stun this Gideon, uh, try to stun him, but miss, because I'm a noob, apparently, but uh, yeah, let's kind of kind of follow him around, uh, make sure he's he's healthy, he's happy, you know, he's the best little twin blast he can be, got my little circlet of uh, healing doing its thing, and boom, stun that Narbash. Just kind of keep poking at him. By this point, it's like it's just me, and I'm like, uh, what? Please help. Uh, but I know that they know that my twin blast is in the jungle, so I try and go and provide him with a little bit of cover. Um, I try and go ahead and stun this Gideon because I thought he was going to ult us. It's kind of bad usage on my part. Um, but, you know, I see that we got a little team fight going on. Uh, fortunately, Aurora and Rampage clean up that the enemy twin blast. I'm like, alright, cool, let's go, let's go kill this Kwong, you know? That Kwong, the Kwong, Kwong, Kwong. He's escaping, but I fence him in. It kind of proves moot because Aurora actually uh, poor frosts him and traps him in place. And we kill him. So here we are. Uh, I'm kind of wandering around the enemy jungle. I try and go to provide uh, my Twin Blast some support, but he's actually backing. I'm like, well, I'm just going to poke this uh, enemy uh, Amber Link, you know? Hassle him a little bit, steal some of their CXP for myself. That's when I get jumped on by Countess. I use my rocket boots to get away. I stun her. <laughs> I keep trying to run. I'm like, oh no, please. Leave me alone, please. I don't like you. Enemy Quan comes up. Countess ults me. Fortunately, I've got so much armor and uh, a fair chunk of health that uh, she doesn't kill me. I just kind of eat it. And I just really rely on my my health potion and my mana for my health regen to, uh, to keep me alive, kind of help me get back up into that fight sooner. With those two cards, with the health potion and the circlet of health, it, uh, it really just means you can kind of stay in lane longer without having to back up at all. So here we are. I see that there's a team fight breaking out in left lane, so I go to provide my team some support because that's my role. Uh, I see Gideon and Kwong. I don't actually mean to steal that Kwong kill. I thought that uh, Rampage or Aurora was going to get him, but the enemy Gideon's like, Nope, I'm out. He's trying to flee, and uh, I get ready to pop my fence, and he takes this wrong turn for some reason, which lets me actually fence him in, and fortunately Aurora is able, I'm sorry, Gideon is able to actually kill him. I also managed to somehow land a stun on both Narbash and Countess. Narbash thinks he's going to try and stun me with his ult. I'm having none of it. I kill him with just basic attacks, you know. So here we are, running mid lane again, uh, being chased by Countess and Gideon. Uh, they're being kind of rascals, you know, trying to poke at me or whatever. Uh, I, right, I like to try and hold on to my stasis bomb. I know it can prove very useful. Uh, I see the Countess is going in on our Twin Blast. Unfortunately, though, just he's so weak, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, <laughs> Narbash and Gideon try and ult us like simultaneously, and my stun bomb actually hits them both and knocks them both out of it, which is awesome. It allows my team to get the kill on both Narbash and Gideon. Pick up a nice little twofer. Who doesn't love that? Okay, so here we are. I'm back in the jungle, running towards mid lane. We got Kwong going in on our count or on, on our Aurora. She freezes him and then kind of you know tries to kill him, whatever. I stun him and then go ahead and uh, keep poking at this Countess. Um, I've managed to fence him in, and Aurora barely manages to survive. You see how much health she had with that with that fence? She would have died because Countess would have just blinked to her and killed her. Uh, our twin blast picks up the kill on Kwong. You know, I try and uh, grab him with a slow bubble. Or grab her with this level, excuse me, but I managed to actually land that kind of stun right there, which is just absolutely beautiful. Twin Blast picks it up, two easy kills, Aurora lived. It's just, mm. So here we are, running around, enemy jungle, I'm making my way to right lane, because uh, there's another team fight. Uh, like, my team is getting jumped, basically. There's three of them, the three of the enemy team, two of our guys. Aurora freezes Narbash. I stun him out of his ult. That's like the third time I've done it this match alone. <laughs> she uh, she freezes him with his ult or with her ult. 
um, managed to escape the Countess. Uh, fortunately, though, this Gideon is just not having any of her shenanigans. I stun him out of it, but not before Aurora, unfortunately, bites the dust. Uh, I keep poking at this uh, this enemy Gideon. Our Gideon is trying to poke at him, but just keeps missing everything. So, unfortunately, I steal that kill. My bad. And right, so here we are. We've pushed up on the right lane, and uh, we're getting kind of pinched on. They've got Narbash and Countess and Kwong coming in. I <laughs> Narbash again tries to ult us. I stun him out of it, interrupt him. Gideon decides to go his own way. I'm like, well, I'm gonna try and regroup with my Gideon because safety in numbers. And I see that Kwong is chasing after us. And I actually fence in the enemy team so that our Gideon can blink away and uh, get away safely with like just the tiniest little sliver of health. Continuing on from that last clip, this Kwong has chased me basically this whole time. I stun him, Aurora shows up to, uh, to provide some help. You know, she just does massive amounts of damage to him, uh, but he starts to chunk away at her. Gideon shows up and just ults Aurora. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it because my, my stun bomb is still on cooldown. I'm like, well, I'm going to get out of here. But I'm like, you know, let's kill Kwong first. Pick up the easy kill and uh, actually manage to escape. So yay for us, and my team shows up to support me. Now here's a clip where Honor the Pure really helps out a lot. Uh, Gideon and Narbash both try and double ult, and I stun them both out of it again. Aurora jumps in, does her Aura Frost, you know, but Countess like runs over and tries to uh, to <laughs> ult our Aurora, and I actually pop Honor the Pure and let her kind of just eat it, thanks to uh, the Honor the Pure and the temporary shield it provides. And then we just turn on uh, that Kwong, so rip him. So here I am, I'm just like solo pushing mid lane, kind of doing my own thing, and I see on the minimap that Narbash is coming after me. Um, about, this is like the eighth time he's tried this, and this time he actually succeeds. I miss my, my stun bomb, he gets his ult off on me. I pop my slow bubble, unfortunately my rocket boots are on cooldown, I'm like, well, I ain't gonna have any of this. I actually managed to trap Narbash, uh, Gideon, and Countess, and Aurora jumps in and ults all three of them. My team collapses on these guys, we pick up two easy kills just right away and uh, we start chasing off to this Gideon unfortunately he manages to survive which is kind of a bummer but uh, well you know that's kinda how things go Our, their twin blast is actually trying to chase after me and uh, deal a bunch of damage but my team just picks up that kill ain't no problem and I manage to run away and escape so yay And then directly after the last clip, we take down the enemy mid inhibitor. Four of them are down. They're Gideon. He's the only one that's up. Uh, we're hammering away at their core, and he thinks he's going to just fly in and ult us. I don't think so. Uh, that's the last interrupt for this match, and then we end it with the victory. What's not to love about that? At the end of the day, Decker is an incredibly fun hero to use. Being able to stun enemies out of ults or slow them down so they can't escape, having the rocket boots so you get to places where you wouldn't normally be able to get to, or being able to fence your enemies in so your allies can pounce on them and AOE them and deal massive damage. It's so much fun. She's incredibly rewarding to play. And uh, yeah, you know, it actually makes a nice little change from the norm. Uh, if you've never tried out a support, Decker is incredibly user-friendly. Uh, the deck that I've got, I feel like, provides a lot of survivability and helps you help your team help you. So try it out, you know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you have a hero you want me to go ahead and review next? If you do, Leave a comment in the the, uh, the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a great deal, and I will appreciate it oh so very much. And please don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.